Welcome to Pump Up the Prompt, Accelerate Instructional Innovation with AI Prompts. I'm Laura Thornton. I'm your host for today. I am the SEMA Digital Teaching and Learning Specialist for Duplin County Schools, and I want to welcome you to our session. Um, we first want to start with NC Bold Cybersecurity and Data Privacy Statement uh, to ensure that everyone is compliant and that we are following our program as we should. Um, so I first want to start with what takes up your time as a teacher? I'll have my participants uh, jot down uh, some of the things that take up their time. And what's gonna happen in this session is we're gonna address some of those way we're, uh, ways that we can help teachers reclaim their time with uh, effective lesson planning with AI prompting. And the essential premise is, is we're doing the best we know how to do, but now we're gonna hopefully know a little bit better and we're gonna do a little bit better with our uh, session planning of um, lesson planning. So our goals for today are we're gonna define AI prompts and what effective elements of educational AI prompts look like. We're gonna practice using some AI prompts. We're gonna create instructional materials for those AI prompts, and we're gonna identify how to effectively um, AI prompting, uh, effective AI prompting can save you time. Um, like always, we're addressing ISTE standards for educators as well as leaders. So I hope you enjoy our session and get something useful out of it. So before we get started, we do want to break down a couple of basic uh, AI vocabulary. Uh, we obviously know AI is artificial intelligence. Gen AI is in our, is what's happening in artificial intelligence that's so groundbreaking. And what's happening there is it's actually creating uh, new content. LLM, that stands for large language models. Those are our chat bots like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude. Um, you hear all of those acronyms. It seems like there's a new one every week or two coming out. Um, and then hallucination is actually false output from that AI chat bot. And today we're focusing in on prompting. And prompting is essentially what you're putting into the AI chat bot. Um, so, a couple of cautions. These are things you need to know before you go as we start down this highway of AI. Um, AI is rapidly evolving. I mean, literally, as we're speaking, changes are coming out and continuously. I'm sure this presentation, I'll have uh, updated it by the time we start our program in July. But um, with AI, always remember um, an 80-20 approach. When you're uh, getting that data, you always need to vet it to make sure that it is accurate. You need to check for uh, facts to make sure that um, it is uh, doing the right information that you need to. You always need to make sure that you're protecting privacy. Uh, no PP to no P2s, where you're identifying student ID numbers, names, addresses, none of that, all of that is taboo. Know that AI has a limit. A lot of the free chatbots uh, have pre-2021 data. Um, actually, you know, as I said earlier, they're emerging uh, chatbots and emerging technologies, but at this point, um, it is can be dated information. Also recognize that AI is biased. Uh, input has been done by users and users inherently are biased. So make sure that you review that content and that you're checking for that. And remember that AI is just a robot. It is not the human brain. We are the creative drivers and uh, using our professional judgment and guidelines. So always um, remember that you are the driver of the car. So with that said, we are going to rev up our engines and we're going to get started um, with um, AI chat body. And we're first going to start identifying our large language models, uh, which is our favorite one. Um, I've highlighted a couple right here, ChatGPT, Perplexity, Gemini, and Claude. And participants here will actually select the one that they would like to explore because in this session, we're actually going to be building these chatbots. And when we're thinking of prompting uh, in consideration of our theme, uh, we are using uh, the chatbot, uh, AI, um, the prompts as our fuel uh, for the chatbots. So let's get started with that. And with all different grades of fuel, we have different grades of prompting. We have a low grade where uh, lesson plan on ecosystems. A fair grade would be uh, create a lesson plan to teach eighth grade students about how factors like food and water affect populations and natives and ecosystems. And then we see our better fuel grade. And this is our better prompt um, when we're generating our prompts. You're an expert science teacher, so you've identified your role, who's skilled at uh, simplifying complex problems for students. You've identified your audience. We want to design an accessible and engaging 60-minute lesson plan to explain how factors like food and water affect populations and the ecosystem to a mixed ability eighth grade class. 
make the lesson relevant uh, by including real world examples. Be sure students have opportunity to collaborate and use critical thinking skills. And as you can see here, we have our low, fair, and better grade of prompting. And you can see the difference as uh, you want um, good results, then you're going to be much more specific and targeting uh, in your prompting than if you just are putting in lesson plan on ecosystems. So let's kind of break this down a little bit further. I want you to realize that prompting is not searching. When we're looking for Google, we might Google, uh, give me uh, some lesson plans for Earth Day, for example. But if we're prompting, we're going to, again, identify a few parameters that we're going to use for prompting to actually generate, create a, a lesson plan as opposed to searching in Google a database for a lesson plan, so to speak. So um, with that said, when we're talking about prompting, there are a few things that we need to keep up with. And these are from Vera Cabrera's um, craft prompt model. And what she here proposes in this instance is when we create context, we're adding specific details to help our AI target our specific needs. We assign the AI chatbot a role. For example, I'm an expert science teacher. We're identifying an audience. We are formatting where we want the format to be a lesson plan, the length of it, the style of it. We want it engaging, we want it relevant. And then we are doing the task and tone. Um, in other words, you know, I want it to be, like I said, engaging, um, maybe friendly, maybe uh, user friendly and all of that good stuff. So these are uh, a parameter that we can, when we're generating our, um, creating our uh, prompt, we can use this framework to help us guide our prompting. So let's kind of break that down a little bit more. And this is from Copilot, Microsoft Copilot. And this is their example of a good prompt. Notice act as a helpful tutor. That's our a role that they've assigned who breaks down complex tests into easy ex explanations. I want you to explain the process of photosynthesis. In other words, you're giving the AI chatbot the exact um, objective of what you're at after to a 14 year old student. You've identified the audience and then you're going through and telling it what kind of context you want it to be and what kind of tone and boundaries you're setting it for, setting it up for. And this just generates a much more better prompt and you'll get better results. Um, so, you know, again, if we just put in, uh, you know, lesson plan on ecosystems, um, you'll be like, what's the big deal? What's so great about this? But by putting in more specific parameters, like the craft model that Vera has got, um, we're going to actually get much better results in our prompting. Other things that you want to consider when you're doing your prompting, uh, tell it to be concise. Uh, tell it to explain its answers. Tell it to ask you questions. Also, it's okay to ask it to take a deep breath, especially if you're giving a long prompt. And then I want to encourage you to chunk your prompt and break it down, which is actually what we're going to do today in our lesson planning. So here we go. In this session, we're going to pump up the prompt with a series of lesson planning prompts. And what I've got here is I've got a, a spreadsheet or a document for you that you're going to make a copy of. And with that, you are going to um, come in and do your prompt. And I've got my lesson example here for what that would look like. So our step one, we're going to identify our lesson prompt. Um, and then we're going to do our step two, which is selecting a YouTube video um, where they've actually um, created that prompt. And we're going to do the transcript of it. And then let's see if my, my slide is not going to go down here. But as you can see, I've got a series of steps that we're, we're going to complete in our presentation. And we're actually going to generate a lesson plan using these prompts. From there, we're going to, my group will um, kind of do some observations. Uh, what did we notice? What were the patterns, effectiveness, and comparisons of our um, chatbot, if you've had an opportunity to do that in our session? So um, what this will look like, um, other ways that we can accelerate our prompt is we can differentiate, uh, debate, round robin, 20 questions, role playing. And here what I've got is I've got... Um, at examples of what this would look like uh, if you wanted to really target those specific ones. And the purpose of this video, we're not going to go through that, but my, in my session, you'll be able to uh, explore each of these uh, models that are already created for you and where you can actually just basically copy and paste to get that into your um, prompting. Uh, so here we go. You will not believe this, but wait, there is more. Like any good road trip, we've got more um, for you to explore. And here we go. Um, I have got the different prompt libraries set up for you. And I wanted to do a little highlight reel of each prompt library. 
So in the first one is AI for Education. Her prompt library is awesome and it's organized by different uh, strands for our lesson planning. And I have those pulled out right here. It provides you a library of AI prompts and it is organized by administration, access, assessment, communication, all sorts of anything really you can need for education. It's organized there. And what you do is you just select the one that you're interested in and you will see the prompt and you can just simply copy and paste it into your favorite chat bot to uh, get you started in your AI prompting journey. Another one that I want to pull out for you is the prompt library. It's more useful things prompt library. And this is organized into categories such as instructional aids, student exercises, and other prompts. And again, just like in the AI for education prompt library, you would just simply copy and paste the one that resonated with you to get a more effective AI prompt. And you consider these as just kind of um, lifting up your prompting instead of you just starting with a blank page. You've got some examples of things that have already been built and you can just simply copy and paste that and customize it for your purposes. Um, here in the AI prompt library, this one is pretty cool because what happens here is they got um, the example for you that's already created and you can see how robust the example is. It's really quite incredible and I wish that my platform allowed me to show you that, but in, you'll have to take my word for it and come to my session. Um, but in this one, the site will generate the custom prompt that you can just simply copy and use and you just kind of fill in the blank. It asks you the question and you just fill it right in and it is a really good resource to get started. The interface is kind of plain looking, but trust me, um, what's in there is pretty um, amazing and worth checking out. Now, this one, the little book of generative AI prompts, this is very well organized. Um, and what he's got here is he's actually organized it by workload reduction, resource creation, um, a different take on how to organize your AI prompting. And so I encourage you to explore that one. And um, last uh, is the Gerby Education uh, Prompt Library. And what they've done here is they've actually given you real world scenarios, um, really kind of broken the lesson planning down to be like guided questions, graded rubrics, much more um, detailed um, prompting for you to kind of get the ideas. And again, it's simply a matter of going to uh, uh, selecting the pathway that you're interested in. And then from there, um, copying and pasting that into your favorite chat bot. And then this one just came out um, earlier this spring, and this is a teacher's guide to chat J GTP. And it gives you some more strategies about uh, how to get more effective results with your AI prompting. So with that said, what's gonna happen in our session is we're actually gonna go out and we're gonna build, uh, we're gonna think of our most challenging part of our course that we're teaching. And we're gonna try to uh, see how we can lift it, level up our lesson planning with AI chat um, prompting with that. So what we're doing here is we are thinking of, again, our weakest or our most challenging piece that we teach. And we're going to grab that and we're going to work on our AI prompting to build a lesson plan to strengthen that up. And then I've got here a lesson repository where I'm going to encourage everyone to drop uh, their prompts into this and link them up so that we can kind of share. And hopefully by the end of our NC Bold uh, road trip, we will have built a strong lesson plan repository for our users. So with that said, I have a Padlet for you of great resources. It first starts out in my first column. As you can see here, I have my chat bots posted. Then I have all of my prompt libraries linked as well as my prompting resources. And I wanted to give you a kind of a one pager of all of the resources instead of you having to dig through um, the resources. Cause I just know in the interest of time, as we get busy in the fall, we're like, well, where was that information? If we simply just bookmark the Padlet, we'll have it all there for us to use. But I did want to highlight the control alt achieve um, resources. He has got really excellent resources on um, prompting. And I encourage you to check those out where he's really broken it down um, and how you can, uh, effectively use that. And he just came out um, the other week with uh, using AI prompting as a collaborative tool. Um, so that's kind of an interesting take on how to create AI prompting. And then last, I wanted to pull out, as always, Ditch That Textbook has great resources on AI prompting, and I want to highlight his resources as well. And so with that said, I want you to think about how this session, hopefully, uh, with AI prompting has helped you save some time. So on the back of that index card that we started at the beginning of our session, we're going to flip it over and kind of jot down some ahas that we realized um, from our session. And then we're going to close it out and just think about AI as a time saver. It's not really uh, something to 
uh, be afraid of, but to just kind of rope it in and harness that power of um, AI prompting into your lesson planning and use that as an assistant for you in generating um, your ideas for lesson planning. I hope you have found this session helpful and I am excited uh, to be presenting at NC Bold and hope to see you at my session. So thank you again for your time and have a great day.